Hey everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkled with Glitter. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing the brand new Magic Iris dies and add-ons from Lawn Fawn. These cards are so much fun. I love creating interactive cards and these are a breeze to put together. So here's a look at the Magic Iris die set as well as the add-ons. And over here on the left, this is the main Magic Iris die set. And it has everything that you need to create a Magic Iris interactive card. It kind of creates almost like this lens opening effect. It is so fun to reveal additional components of a scene or of a sentiment. And like I said, it has some funky looking dies in it, but I'm going to break this all down for you so that you know exactly how to use it. Now, these other two die sets that you're seeing on the right-hand side, these are the available add-ons, and these change the look of the Magic Iris on your card. So starting out with the Magic Iris Scalloped add-on, and then the Magic Iris add-on, and this one is really cool because it kind of incorporates it into the backdrop of your card, and I'll show you all of this in action. So I'm going to start out by die cutting all of the pieces that I need and I am just going to use some various colors of cardstocks so that you can really see what's going on. I started out by die cutting that kind of ring or donut die and then I am going to die cut this kind of balloon or sausage looking die. Now everything that you see here is what I need to complete my magic iris but I've also die cut the add-ons here too so I'm going to set those aside. So you're going to see that I have die cut this ring or donut die a total of four times. Now this gray one here is kind of an optional one, but what you need to complete the mechanism itself is three of these ring die cuts, one of these tab die cuts, I need three of the stabilizer die cuts here, and three of these sausage kind of or balloon <laughs> die cuts here and you can see that I've die cut all of these things but you don't see this one here and that's because I am actually going to use this kind of funky looking die to create the guides on one of these donut dies so I call this the guide die here I'm just lining it up where the curves around the main portion of that center part of the die are lining up with the opening of my ring or my donut die. And I'm going to hold this in place using some ThermoWeb purple tape and then run that through my die cut machine. And you're gonna see that it creates three notches and three areas that are kind of guidelines for where you're going to place your stabilizers later on. So you can see the little stitched areas. Those are your guides for adhesive and your stabilizers. And this die also creates the openings so that you can place the tabs of these sausage or balloon shaped dies into that ring. So I'm going to show you that here. Now this sausage or balloon die, however you want to look at it, creates not only the tab, but also a little X on there so that you know where to place your glue dots. So I'm gonna start with that ring that has my guides already die cut into it and I'm gonna take my little balloon pieces and I'm gonna take the little tab that's on the end and slide them into the openings. And I'm gonna make sure that the curve of this balloon matches up with the curve of this ring. And then I'm gonna do this with all three pieces. So I'm just taking the tab of that little balloon and just sliding it into the opening and pushing that tab kind of all the way to the outside of the ring and you're gonna see that these line up perfectly. Now my next step is to add glue dots onto each one of those X's that are die cut into my balloon shape. And I'm just laying this onto my work surface here, keeping all of those die cuts lined up with that ring. And I am going to use the 3 16 inch size glue dots. These fit perfectly over those X's. And I'm just going to put one glue dot on top of each X on each of these balloons. So a total of three glue dots. And that's all the adhesive that I'm going to place on this for now. So I'm just using a little tweezer to pick up these glue dots. If you have the ones that kind of have individual glue dots, you can just peel the tabs and put those on there. But these 3 16 inch glue dots work perfectly. Now I'm gonna hold this up to the camera so that you can see where I have each of these glue dots. I have one over each of the X's here, so you can see that there. And before I move on, I'm gonna make sure that I just have all of these balloons kind of lined up with that outer ring. And once they're in perfect position, I am going to take 
one of the plain ring or donut dies that I die cut out of some plain Nina Solar White cardstock. And I'm going to lay it right on top of that, kind of sandwiching those balloon pieces between the two rings. Now, once I have that pressed into place, I'm going to actually flip this over. And from the back side of this assembly, I can actually see those stitched guides that my guide die created on this ring earlier. Now, these stitched guides are going to help me determine where I need to put adhesive and where I need to add my stabilizer. So at each of these stitched areas, I'm going to place my tape runner down into that and run my tape runner to the outer edge of this ring. So just straight out from those little stitched guides that my guide die created earlier. Now this adhesive is what's going to hold my stabilizer pieces in place on the back of this assembly. So I'm gonna take my three stabilizer pieces and you're going to see that these are actually cut to match the curve of that inner opening. So you're just going to place these right inside those stitched guide areas over that adhesive that you've just placed there and press them into place. And they're going to stick out and that's fine. We're gonna take care of that in just a minute. So once I have those placed using my stitched guide areas, I'm gonna flip this over and I am going to add my pull tab piece. Now to do this, you're gonna just wanna take this assembly and take one of those stabilizers, it doesn't matter which one, and point it towards your body. And then you're going to take your tab piece and you're gonna add some tape runner adhesive to this about halfway down the tab. And you're gonna make sure that the curved out edge matches up with the inner opening of your ring here. So I'm just placing it just to the right side of that little stabilizer coming out. And you'll know that it's in the perfect position when the inner curves match up and you have this little V shape here between your stabilizer and your tab piece. So you can see it creates a little V. And then I'll just press that into place. Now once we have that tab in place, we're just going to add some more tape runner adhesive to the top side of these stabilizer pieces that we added earlier. And we're gonna take our third and final ring and lay it on top to where it lines up with all of the other rings and all of the other pieces that we have in place. There's no adhesive on this ring. The only adhesive that's going to hold this on is the adhesive that we just placed on the top side of those stabilizers. And in order to hold this in place, we're just going to fold those stabilizers over to where they stick on that top ring, and that's what's going to hold it in place. Now, you don't want to like super pull these really tight. You just kind of want to fold it over and press them into place. And you'll notice they don't go all the way to the center of that opening. That's the way it's supposed to be. If you have them all the way to the center, that means they're too tight. Now that completes the Magic Iris assembly here. And you can see I can close this up and open it. And by the way, it's much easier to do this when it's on a card. But <laughs> I just wanted to show you that we have a working Magic Iris assembly here. Now this Magic Iris base is where all of your other Magic Irises kind of leap off of. So you have your option of your tabs here that you can add for the arrow. You can either add the little knockout arrow there or the tab. And then this fourth and final ring that I've cut out of gray cardstock, that's kind of the finishing touch. That covers up all those stabilizers and all that kind of mess that you have underneath. And you can stamp this, ink blend, you can use pattern paper, whatever you want. And that just kind of adheres right on top of that entire stack and covers up all of your stabilizers and other pieces underneath. So now that we've created the basic Magic Iris assembly, I'm gonna show you the add-on, starting with the scalloped add-on here. This kind of just adds that really nice scalloped flare. And then there's the Magic Iris add-on. Now this one incorporates the Magic Iris into your card front so that all of those rings and everything are hidden. You just have that opening where your Magic Iris sits behind and then you can have it reveal onto your card base or onto a scene that's underneath. But this is a really fun way of changing the look of that Magic Iris. So you don't have to have it sitting on top of the card. Now with each of these add-ons, they have their own kind of little circle and tab features that come with it. For that Magic Iris add-on, you're going to notice that there's a really funky arrow tab shape. You're going to adhere that onto the tab that you added onto your Magic Iris mechanism earlier. 
And you're going to notice there's like this weird piece sticking out. Don't worry. It's going to look totally fine once we fix it up. I'm just going to trim that little curved edge off. And then I can add adhesive to this and add it onto this, lining up that tab and the opening. And you're going to see how that incorporates that pull tab and the magic iris opening onto your card front. So that's a really cool different look and I love that Lawn Fawn not only created this fabulous interactive die but they gave you options to kind of change up the look of it as well. Now there's just a couple more things that I want to share with you about adhering these magic irises onto your card front. You want to adhere these with the magic iris in the closed position so that you can make sure that that tab is on the front of your card and that it's contained inside the card base so that it fits inside your envelope. To add adhesive onto the magic iris die, you're just going to add it onto the back side of these stabilizers. So those stabilizers are key for all of your adhesive. And you can see when this magic iris is in the open position, there's the tabs that kind of stick out. All you're going to do to hide those is just bend them in onto the back side of this magic iris mechanism. And then you can place this onto your card front. And you're going to see I'm trying to stick it on with it in the open position. Don't do that. <laughs> Close it up and then stick it onto your card front. And that creates your magic iris card. Now you're noticing here probably that I don't have anything covering up all of that mechanism. That's fine. I just am doing this to show you the basics of this and how to assemble it. And we're going to make this look really cute here in just a second. Okay, so now that I've shown you how to put this all together, let's make a couple of cards, shall we? <laughs> I am going to be using the new Lawn Fawn Superstar stamp set, and I have a sentiment here that says there are stars, dot, 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 and I am just kind of bending this on my block to match the curve of this wavy banner die cut from Lawn Fawn. I'm inking it up in some black ink, and I'm just going to stamp that down onto my banner, and you can see I already have some items stamped and die cut and colored here off to the side, and I'm just working working on a few of the finishing touches. Now for the inner part of my magic iris, I'm going to actually stamp this circle that is die cut when you die cut those outer rings. So these little circles are a part of that die cut and they can slip right inside that magic iris to continue your sentiment or your scene or whatever you want on the inside. And I'm stamping another sentiment here or another portion of the sentiment that says, and then there are superstars. And all of these stamps came from the superstar stamp set from Lawn Fawn. Now this superstar stamp set has those kind of open letters and it also has the solid portion that you can stamp inside to fill those with color very quickly. So I use the Lawn Vaughn Ballet Slippers ink to stamp that. And then I'm adding a couple more shooting stars here in some light gray ink. And I will add a little more Copic coloring to this circle so that when my magic iris opens, I have this really beautiful continuation and a lot of color and um, some little shooting stars going on as well. Now I've already die cut my scalloped magic iris add-on here and I wanted to add some clouds to it. So I am using the Lawn Fawn Stitched Clouds Backdrop Die and this is the portrait version and I'm just running that scalloped magic iris add on there and it's going to add those stitch clouds onto this ring that I'm going to use to top the entire thing and kind of finish it off. So I thought I'd quickly run through the assembly of this magic iris again so that you can see it. And I am using some pattern paper for my little shutter here. These little balloon or sausage shaped pieces are what make up that shutter. And I've die cut them from the Hello Sunshine Remix Petite Paper Pad. It's this really adorable kind of rainbow pattern paper. And once I have those into position on my ring, I've slipped those into the openings on that ring, I am going to add my 3 16 inch glue dots onto the X's that are on top of those balloon shapes. 
I'm going to make sure that everything is lined up. And once it's all lined up, I'm going to take my second ring and I am going to lay it right on top, sandwiching these balloon dies between the two rings. And I just kind of like to run my fingers along those shapes to make sure everything's lined up correctly. And then I can just position that ring on top and press it into place. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to use the stitched areas that my guide die created to add my adhesive onto the back of this assembly. So I'm starting in that stitched area and taking my tape runner in a straight line out from that stitched area to the outer part of this ring. Now on that adhesive, I am going to add my three stabilizer pieces. I'm just lining them up in that stitched area that my guide die created and pressing them onto that tape runner adhesive that I've already added onto the back. And once I have all three of these stabilizers in place, I'm gonna flip this over to the front side of this assembly and I'm going to add my pull tab piece. Now to add my pull tab piece, I'm going to make sure that one of those stabilizers, it doesn't matter which one, is pointed towards my body. And then I'm going to add my pull tab just to the right of that stabilizer that's pointed towards my body, making sure the curved area of it lines up with the opening of that magic iris ring there. And when you have this in the proper placement, you're going to notice that there's like a little V shape that's created between the stabilizer and that pull tab. Now the final step in the assembly is to add some tape runner adhesive to the top portion of these stabilizer pieces, add my third ring on top, and then I'm gonna fold these stabilizers over to hold that ring in place. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not folding these or pulling these too tight as I fold them over. I'm just gonna kinda grab the stabilizer and fold it over that ring, and that should be perfect. And you'll notice that when you fold these in, the stabilizer doesn't go all the way to the inside of the ring, and that's how you know that you have them in the right place. Now before I add this onto my card, I'm gonna make sure that I fold those tabs in on the back side of this magic iris mechanism, but I'm just making sure that everything looks right and is lined up correctly, it's all functioning properly. And then I'm gonna take some more of this Hello Sunshine Remix pattern paper pad. I'm gonna cut a small strip down for the front of my A2 size card. I'm adding my little decorative arrow piece to my pool tab there with a little bit of lawn fawn glue tube. And then I'm gonna start putting all of this together. My card base is made of the Essentials by Ellen linen cardstock. It's cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches and scored at five and a half inches to create an A2 top folding card. And I'm just using a little tape runner adhesive to add that pattern paper onto my card base. Now I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna fold those tabs in on the back side of my Magic Iris assembly. And then I'm going to use my tape runner adhesive and I'm adding tape runner adhesive just to the back side where those stabilizers are. Then I'll close this back up and I'll position it onto my card base with my Magic Iris in the closed position so that I can make sure that that tab fits onto my card base and it's not hanging off. And that will make sure that I can fit it into an A2 sized envelope. Now once that's positioned onto my card base, I'm gonna take this circle that I've stamped with my sentiment. I'm gonna add some tape runner adhesive to the back of it, and then I'm just gonna slide it into that opening on my Magic Iris, adhering it to the card base. And then I will add this adorable cloud scalloped ring that I created onto the top of the entire thing to finish off that Magic Iris. Now I have several pieces that I've stamped and colored and die cut here from the Superstar stamp set. I'm just adding those on to the outside of that Magic Iris using some foam adhesive. And you can see I have the little cloud there at the top with the shooting star. And I have this little speech bubble, which I think is so adorable. It says, you shine. And I'm gonna finish off this entire thing with my little wavy banner at the top and my shooting star. And that shooting star, I did add a little bit of tonic aqua shimmer pin to it to make it kind of sparkle. And I will finish it off with a little bit of glossy accents too. Now, because you know me and I need a little bit of sparkle in my life, <laughs> I'm adding some sparkling clear sequins with my Lawn Fawn glue tube. I'm just adding those to the front. And I think that finishes off the card just perfectly. And I think these magic irises are so cool because they work so seamlessly and they really are easy to put together. I know it seems like there's a lot of steps, but once you put one together, 
they go together very quickly. And like I said, it just works so smoothly as you can see here. Now I decided to create another card featuring the Lawn Fawn Year 10 stamp set. And I already had this plain white Magic Iris assembled. And so I decided I would go ahead and stamp on the Magic Iris shutter portion. So I'm just using some of the sentiments from that Year 10 stamp set and I'm lining them up in my Misty here so that I can stamp right onto the shutter portion. So I'm going to position them. I'm going to close the door of my Misty to pick up my stamps. And then I'm going to ink them up in some black ink and stamp them right onto the iris. Now you're going to notice here that I don't get a great stamping on my first try, which is why I'm really glad I used my mini Misty here. Because <laughs> I'll just ink that sentiment up again and re-stamp and it will all be just fine. And I really just wanted to show you that this is actually very easy to stamp on. So if you wanted to stamp onto your iris rather than create that opening with some pattern paper, you can definitely do it. But I do recommend using some sort of stamp positioner for that. Now I've die cut the Magic Iris Scalloped add-on from some pattern paper. This is from the Hello Sunshine Petite Paper Pad. It's got these adorable little party banners on it and I've just covered my entire assembly with that little Magic Iris Scalloped add-on. And then I have my little cactus here all stamped and die cut and colored and I'm going to assemble that onto the front as well. Now for the opening of my Magic Iris, I wanted to finish off my sentiment and I'm using this really fun pattern paper also from the Hello Sunshine Remix pattern paper pad. And I've just stamped the continuation of that sentiment on the inside. So it says, hope your birthday is on point. Now I decided that white Iris was a little bit plain. So I went ahead and removed the scalloped piece that I went ahead and put on there earlier and I'm just doing a little bit of ink blending on that with some Lawn Fawn Ballet Slippers ink just to add a little bit of interest because there was a lot of just like plain white and you're going to see that that little bit of ink blending really finishes off this card and to further embellish it I went ahead and strung some pom-poms onto some string and I adhered that kind of over winding around my cactus and I'm just using a little bit of Lawn Fawn glue tube for that and I will also add some sparkling clear sequins and I have to tell you I was so excited <laughs> when I figured out that you could adhere sequins inside the opening of the Magic Iris and it doesn't interfere with the movement. I mean, if there's anything that makes this sparkle girl happy, it's being able to put it on the inside too so that you have those sequins when you open up that Magic Iris. So here's a look at the second card. I think this is so adorable. I cannot wait to give it to my friend for her birthday. And that completes my two cards for today featuring the brand new Magic Iris, Magic Iris Scalloped Add-ons, and Magic Iris Add-on from Lawn Fawn, as well as their Superstar Stamp Set and Year 10 Stamp Set. I think these cards are so much fun and I cannot wait to make more. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in these projects in the description at YouTube, but head on over to my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. As always, I'm so glad you stopped by and hung out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss any of my paper crafting and card making video tutorials. As always, thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the very end. You know if you've made it this far, you are one of my favorites. <laughs> If you want to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and click the button on the left side of the screen. And here's a couple more video tutorials I thought you might enjoy.